I sat down with Florida Congressman Greg Stubbe. In the interview, he also voices his concern over the influence the Chinese Communist Party has on American soil. Congressman Greg Stubbe, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. But I want to ask you about uh, gun laws that are looking like things are shaping up in the Senate uh, bipartisan. You have uh, over 10 potential uh, Republican senators that have agreed to the framework uh, for new gun laws. First of all, how do you think we got to this point? And more importantly, what is in uh, these potential laws? We got to this point as a country for a lot of different myriad of uh, events and things that have happened over years. Uh, one, we have an epidemic of fatherless homes. Um, there's statistic after statistic of rapists, 75% of them are without fathers. We have a real epidemic and it's in the home here in our country and that's what we should be focused on. And what we've done over the years is we've created these gun-free zones and there's statistics um, that 98% of mass shootings happen in gun-free zones. It's not, not a surprise that people who want to kill a lot of people are going to go to a place where they know there's defenseless children, there's people without a firearm to be able to defend themselves, and there's things that we can do as a country, as a nation, as states. Um, to be able to ensure that, especially at our schools, we have people that are properly trained, former current military, former current law enforcement, to be able to react quickly to these type of scenarios. Some states have allowed for that to happen. And what's interesting is in those states, you don't see these type of mass shootings occur. Um, but unfortunately, the Democrats want to go the other direction. They want to blame the tool that's being used to create the destruction and not the person actually doing the destruction. Uh, it's an attempt to take all of our firearms. Uh, assault weapons bans are openly being discussed. Certain handgun bans have openly been discussed in the House. The bill that passed the House uh, would ban certain magazine sizes, like that would stop the atrocities in some way, shape, or fashion. And so then it goes to the Senate, and the, the more offensive parts of the House bill have been removed. The upping of the age, um, the magazine bans, the assault weapons bans, none of that is in there. But you have things like the red flag laws. You have things that are a clear violation of our constitutional rights. Uh, the red flag laws, and I voted against the one that passed in Florida years ago, clearly violates your right under the Fourth Amendment uh, to protection of illegal search and seizure by the government. Without a warrant, without a judge telling a law enforcement officer they can take your property, you have incidences where law enforcement officers, and in this bill that was originally passed by the Democrats in the House, they wanted counselors and teachers and family members to be able to have have this ability to take your guns away. It's a very dangerous path to be going down, all in reaction to a shooting that uh, could have been prevented by having somebody that was properly trained to react. Congressman, you touched upon uh, gun-free zones, and you also said if people were properly trained in Uvalde, it could have prevented it. We're seeing reports now that, um, that the officers were there, but they did not use their guns. Uh, if this is true, and yet we're seeing a big knee-jerk reaction to what happened there, it's almost like um, these laws are, are based on a false premise. It's absolutely, and it's always how the Democrats use it. Uh, you, you know, the 30 people that were shot last weekend in Chicago, they don't care about that for some reason. They only care about using these mass shootings to be able to, to talk and have that narrative of, well, it's the gun's fault. We shouldn't have semi-automatic rifles. We shouldn't allow for, for what they call high-capacity magazines. We shouldn't allow all of these things and they use these tragedies to try to accomplish a political goal and their political goal is and they're now talking more openly about it is to take your guns away they would love nothing more than to take every American's right to possess a firearm away from them despite the fact that 99.97 percent of those between the age of 18 and 21 don't commit a murder, don't commit a violent crime with a, with a handgun or a firearm. So they want the 99.97% to not be able to, to protect themselves while only taking the guns away from, from uh, criminals. And you're never ever going to be able to prevent that. If somebody wants to commit a crime, especially murder, they can use a vehicle, they can use a pressure cooker like the Boston Bombers, they can use some other tool to accomplish their mission. Congressman, just switching gears a little bit, there's reports coming out now that the CCP-backed groups, the Confucius Institutes that have infiltrated many of our universities throughout the country, 
um, are starting to pop up. They were being shut down at one point by the Trump administration, and they're just rebranding themselves. You have a bill that you've introduced called the Protecting Higher Education from Foreign Threats Act. Did you have China in mind when you wrote this bill? Yeah, absolutely. I had China in mind uh, when we wrote the bill because they've so infiltrated our higher education system in the United States. We've even seen incidences in Florida where professors have been compromised, uh, where we've had research in institutes like the Moffitt Cancer Center, where their higher executive level individuals were actually uh, being paid to give research information on cancer research to the Chinese Communist Party. So it's a real issue that I think our country is facing that's not really being addressed. What do you think is the solution to combat this? Well, what we did in the bill was doesn't if, if any professors are receiving CCP funding, um, obviously they're, in my opinion, compromised because they're being paid by the Chinese Communist Party. If that's the case, then if the, the research institute or the higher education institute or the college would continue to employ them, they would lose federal funding. So obviously a good stick that we have at the federal level is the amount, the, the, the huge amount of funding that these colleges and universities receive. And that's really the only way you're going to get them to be compliant, um, is trying to take away the resources they get from the federal government. You could probably pass a bill mandating that you can't employ people that are also being paid by the Chinese Communist Party and most of these, especially the Harvards and Yales of the world, would probably just ignore it. Um, so tying it to something that is a stick um, to them losing their funding, I think, is a very important aspect of the bill. Congressman Greg Stubbe, thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me.